working right now on a new book around invincible companies. And the idea there is that, okay, it's not just about managing your existing businesses, it's also about creating new opportunities. And that requires managing two cultures under one roof. One where you exploit what you have, and another one where you explore completely new opportunities. Anything you would want to add? And maybe before to start to manage this exploit and explore portfolio, uh, it could be interesting for a company to have a clear vision of what they want to achieve, what sometimes we call the design brief or design playground. So to have a clear idea of what you want to achieve in this company it could be uh, to innovate for clear, but what kind of business model, in which kind of uh, direction you want to go, I think it's key at the beginning. Once you set up those design constraints, what do you want to achieve? What's your vision? So, a great example is Unilever with Paul Pullman saying, everything we do, all the innovations need to have a positive impact on the environment. You actually want to set up the system to innovate because today every company has some kind of innovation lab, does R&D, but there are very few growth <laughs> innovations that happen. So strategically, you actually need to set up that space where innovation has power and innovators can thrive. That requires an additional, not a completely new culture, but an additional culture where people can experiment, maybe fail, probably fail, learn, and create new stuff. And that culture doesn't really exist today. What other advice would you give uh, senior leaders? It <laughs> could be, uh, you know, since maybe deciding uh, the playground is a decision process. But I think when you want to achieve this and to balance the exploit and explore, it's no more a decision process, it's a design process. So you need to experiment, to prototype, to test. And I think it's key. And if you agree that it's key, it means that we need to train people to achieve those kind of objectives using this kind of techniques, prototyping, testing, and so on. Maybe one last thing is that there's some myths around innovation that, you know, it's about the creative genius. No, it's not. It's about process. So of course, you need people who can deal with ambiguity and who see the patterns. But today, they don't have the space to do that. So if you're really strategically serious about innovation, you need to create that space. You need to train those people and also have the right KPIs to actually allow innovation to thrive. And those are different KPIs from execution. So again, you know, two worlds that need to live together. We like to sometimes call this the ambidextrous organization. And it's possible. It's not rocket science. It's really a decision to create that playground and go ahead. Training and practice. I think it's, uh, you learn practicing something. So you need to innovate, trying to innovate, trying again. And normally, uh, we hope to be successful at the end. And there's some leaders out there that do that. Take Jeff Bezos with Amazon. So it's not a coincidence that they can grow so fast and come up with innovations like Amazon Web Services. They created the culture to do so. Any company can learn from the innovation culture that exists at Amazon. And it's not only true for big companies. I think it's also true for SMEs. We have visited a couple of them that are very innovative and they try to balance this uh, exploit and export portfolios of business models.